Hi hey everyone, this is Sarah from Japan, and welcome back to another read-along. First and foremost, I'd like to thank my Lord Jesus Christ in heaven for allowing me to do all these things, and I give all um, glory and praise to Him. Amen. Alright, so let's all open up our Bibles to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Okay, it talks about immorality in the church. Funny topic to be talking about. Sounds like an oxymoron, right? Well, let's see if we can't uh, compare what's going on in the churches nowadays, okay? Alright. So anyway. Immorality defiles the church. Okay. Verse 1. It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you, and such sexual immorality is not even named among the Gentiles. It means... These people who are supposed to be following Jesus are worse off than the Gentiles, the common folk that don't know him at all. That a man has his father's wife, oh, and you are puffed up, you're arrogant, he says, and have not, gather, have not rather mourned that he has done this deed might be taken away from among you, and he might be taken away. Why do we let this continue on? You know, why do we let these people stay? when they're determined to, to go their own way and be, you know, and commit these sins. For I indeed, as absent in body but present in spirit, have already judged as though I were present. Yes, he judged. Paul judged. Yes, as though I were present. Him who has done, who has so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together along with my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, deliver such a one to Satan deliver such a one to say, wow, that's harsh, it sounds like, right? But it is just. Like I said, it's all choice. It's choice. These people choose to remain in these sins. Okay? Deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that his spirit may be, may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. Deliver him to Satan so that he may, you know, experience the destruction of the flesh. And through the, the destruction of the flesh, his spirit will be saved. Okay? Don't let him go not suffering. Oh, just, oh, we'll just pray for him. No, it says. Let him suffer. Deliver him to Satan for the destruction of the flesh so that he can be saved. It's only through chastening that this person is going to be saved. In the day of the Lord, Je Lord Jesus, your glorying is not good. Do you, not, do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? A little leaven makes the whole lump blow up, you know? Leaven is a... Uh, it's like yeast, okay, and it's like um, it's likened to sin, all right. In this case, therefore, purge out the old leaven. Purge it out. Burn it out. Get rid of it. Destroy it. Purge out the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, okay. Better to be sh to be uh, shaped and stuff, you know. Since you are truly uh, unleavened, okay, with no you no know, sin in you. For indeed Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. He was sacrificed for us. Okay, he was our Passover bread, the unleavened bread. Therefore let us keep the fast, not with the old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Immorality must be judged. Immorality must be judged. I wrote to you in my epistle not to keep company with sexually immoral people. Okay? Yet I certainly did not mean with sexually immoral people of this world. Okay? Yet I did not certain I certainly did not mean with the sexually immoral people of this world. Okay? Or with the covetous or the extortioners or idolaters. Since then you would need to go out of the world because the world is full of sinners. So he says, "Yes, you you know, do not keep company with sexually immoral people." Yet I do not mean the people of this world. Okay? So what does he mean then? Okay? But now I have written to you to not keep company with anyone named a brother. Named a brother who is sexually immoral. Did you catch that? It says, do not keep company with sexually immoral people. Yet I did not mean the sexually immoral people of this world. The, immor the sexually immoral people of this world are of the kingdom that doesn't know God yet. Okay? They're of, the, they're of Satan's kingdom still, you know? They're, they're of the world. They don't know God yet. He says, no, if you did that, you'd have to go out of the world. Do not keep company with the sexually immoral brother. Who's the brother? A brother is a fellow believer. Okay, that's not supposed to be of this world. Okay? Alright, get that? 
who is sexually immoral or covetous or an idolater or a reviler or a drunkard. Yeah, you uh, Christians out there drinking and stuff on the weekends and stuff. That means you. Or an extortioner. Extortioner, anyone who uh, tries to get people to give more money to the church so they can, you know, use it for themselves. Not even to eat with such a person. That per kind of person is a hypocrite. Okay? For what have I to do with judging those who are outside? Okay? The outsiders. Do you not, so don't judge the sinners, judge the ones inside. Do you not judge those who are inside? But those who are outside, God judges. Therefore, put away from yourself the evil person. The evil person in the church. The one that's calling themselves a brother and who's not. Okay? For that, you need spiritual discernment, too. Ask for Holy Spirit discernment. Pray for it. It's really important. 1 Corinthians 6. Do not sue the brethren. Do not sue the brethren. Yeah, it's funny that uh, a lot of people are suing each other these days, and most of them, the majority, are Christians. <laughs> Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unrighteous and not before the saints? Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? Don't bring your matters in front of the court, you know. Bring it in front of the brethren. Okay, the saints. Because, verse 2, Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Do you not know that we shall judge angels? Yes, we're going to judge. All of you who quote Matthew 7, the first part of it, and leave out the rest. It says, do not judge me. Hello? You know? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then you have judgments concerning things pertaining to this life, do you appoint those who are least esteemed by the church to judge? I say this to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you, not even one, who will be able to judge between his brethren? But brother goes to law against brother, and that before unbelievers. You go before unbelievers and plead your case. Why not go before the, the believers? Now, therefore, it is already an utter failure, okay? The reason we shouldn't go before unbelievers and we should go before other believers is because other believers are supposed to have Holy Spirit discernment, okay? The world doesn't have this. They don't see things the way we see things because they don't see things through the eyes of the Spirit, you know? That being the Holy Spirit of God. They got on hell goggles, is my, one of my brothers likes to say, you know? They got on hell goggles. They don't have Holy Spirit vision. How can they see? to know the difference between what is truly good and what is evil, okay? What is right and what is wrong, what is right and what is unrighteous, you know? I don't have that discernment. So why do you take your case before them, okay? Now, therefore, it is already an utter failure for you to go to law against one another. Why do you not rather accept wrong? Why don't you say, okay, I'm wrong. Why do you not rather let yourselves be cheated? No, you yourselves do wrong and cheat, because this is why. You yourselves do wrong and cheat, and you do these things to your brethren. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. You all need to really pay heed to, to this, you know, Corinthians 5 and 6 here. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, okay, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, and such were, were, past tense. If you still are, you better do something about that. But you were washed, you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of Lord Jesus by the Spirit of our God. Glory God in body and spirit. All things are lawful for me. Okay, for those who say that you're, un you're not, we're not under law anymore. All right, listen, all things are lawful for me, but not, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Foods for the stomach and stomach for the foods. That's what man says. But God will destroy both it and them. Okay, now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his power. 
Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you, do you not know that he is, who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, okay, this is in Genesis. For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Your body is a temple. You don't graffiti a temple, do you? You don't go and graffiti a church or a temple, do you? Why would you do that to your own body? Okay? Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God. You are not your own. You are not your own. For you were bought at a price. You were bought at a very expensive price. Your, your price cost Jesus Christ his life. Okay? And it caused him so much suffering on the way to giving up his life for you. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. They are God's. They're not your own. You know? It's my body. I can do whatever I want. No, it's not. It's God's body. It's his temple. Okay? And, you know, I think of all the sins, God has the most to say about sexual immorality. If you read throughout the Bible, he has a lot to say about sexual immorality. You know, and sexual immorality, adultery, and idolatry go hand in hand. Okay? And it's the one, it's the one, one of the most uh, powerful stumbling blocks that Satan uses. Okay? It is the most destructive, not only to ourselves, but to everyone around us. And it destroys generations, whole generations even. Okay? That's why it is hated so much by God. Okay? Your body is not your own. Okay? And, you know, he says in um, Jesus himself, words in red, in Matthew 5.48, he says, Be ye perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Be ye holy. And, and first in Peter it says, uh, Be holy as your Father is holy. Be perfect, be holy. He doesn't say things that are impossible for us. They're not impossible. It's not impossible to be perfect. It's not impossible to be holy. However, in our own strength it is. But through the power of His Spirit, it says, not by my strength, not by my might, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. You can, and you should be, aiming to meet, to, to hit that mark that He has put there for you, to be perfect as your Father in Heaven is perfect, to be holy as He is holy. No, this is not uh, legalism. This is the Word of God. God is the same today, yesterday, and forever. Okay? And with that being said, um, if you are struggling with a sin and you need prayer about it, please, you can send me an inbox message and I will pray for you. You know, I understand about those kind of sins. I grew up in that. And I know, I understand. And they're very difficult sins to walk away from. That's why Satan uses them. They're the hardest to walk away from. But if you really, really, you know, want to do something about that and you need help in prayer, I will pray with you for it. Okay? Until next time, I pray that you are all blessed in Yeshua's name. I'm out. Bye. Have a great day.